Hi, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your August 25th to 31st, 2024 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out tremendously, so thank you so very much for doing so. And if you're interested in a private reading, check out my website, daneharttarot.com. It's listed in the description box below, as is all the inf information for a reading. So check that out if you want to. I look forward to reading for you. Now, before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. This cleanse and meditation will be accompanied by a loud sound and really helps me gauge your energy during this reading and what spirit has to say. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. All right, Scorpio. Oh, no, not Scorpio. All right, Sagittarius. Let's see what the tarot has to say. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. Okay, we have the Knight of Cups, the Seven of Cups, the Seven of Wands reversed, the Eight, the Ten of Cups, the Queen of Wands, that's us Sagittarius, coming through, we're represented by the Wands in the Minor Arcana, Angels and Spirit Guides, show me clearly, guide this reading, the Eight of Swords, the sun card reversed. The magician, interesting, interesting. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. The fool, the seven of pentacles, and the knight of, the page of, of swords. Let me make sure everything is in frame. All right, Sagittarius. Okay, so what I think is really funny, you know how I said Scorpio there? Well, the Knight of Cups represents water sign energy, Pisces, Scorpio, and Cancer. So just keep your eyes open for Scorpio if you know their their chart. But also the time frame, October 23rd to November 21st, is important for you. And that's what you're moving forward towards what you love, towards what you deeply desire in your life, and towards your passion and your connection. So that is really quite beautiful and interesting here. We are also going to see that we're we're finding a new way of dealing with things. There was a sense before, like, I have to fight, I have to fight. And now there's a sense of, like, I'm not wasting my energy on this nonsense. So do be aware of that. There's an energy shift here that's very important. We have the sun reversed, which just means that the yes that we that we know is coming is on a pause on a time out. So just being aware of that is going to be important because we can get really frustrated, right? We have the eight of swords here. We're really in our own head because we're like, I know this is supposed to be happening. And yet we're, we're questioning like, when will it ever get there? Stand in your magic, stand in yourself, but also know as above, so below, as you believe it, so it becomes, which can also be really frustrating if you're sitting there and you're like, Dean, I've been believing this. I knew it. I felt it in my bones. Sometimes though, Sometimes divinity has a different plan and what you feel in your bones and what you know to project you forward towards where you need to be is, is going to be warped a bit by spirit and, and spirit's desire for you, spirit's plan for you, and also what's written in your Akashic records and all of that. So just being aware of that energy is going to be very, very, very important. Sometimes we can't just will things to happen and it feels frustrating because then it's like, well, why even believe? And there's that energy coming through Sagittarius. It's like, well, I believe this with all my soul and all myself. So it didn't happen. And now I'm, I'm like, I'm fed up and I'm done. And spirit's like, don't, don't you dare give up on yourself because I'm not giving up on you. And you just have to know that Sagittarius, that spirit is not giving up on you because that's pretty darn cool. Let's see what spirit has to say. And if you're interested in entering to receive a free reading, 
you have to do three things. You have to like, comment, and subscribe. Comment with a butterfly in the comment box because that lets me know that you would like to be entered to receive a reading. Some people don't want to be, and we want to respect that. But also, guys, we have to follow the rules here. Only the person who wins the reading emails me. All right. Because if we have, if that's not the case, then we might not be able to continue this. Okay. So I want to keep on continuing giving out these readings because this is my way of saying thank you to you guys for being such a beautiful part of this family and this community. I mean, I'm so grateful to have you here. And yeah, so let's just, let's just be respectful to the winner. Okay. And the winners are announced every Sunday. So here we have rediscovery. We are rediscovering ourselves. We are rediscovering what we want and what we love and where we need to be and what is, is our passion, what we desire, what we had loved once upon a time and it felt like, oh, that got taken away from me. No, now we're rediscovering ourselves and it is really quite beautiful. Our chakra energy, angels and spirit guides show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. This is soul's healing. This is a soul star chakra located six inches above our crown. There's a real sense of being healed, of connecting, of healing light energy, just kind of falling down onto us. And that's going to be beautiful. And that is beautiful. This sense of, of I'm being healed as I walk, as I breathe, as I play, as I'm part of this world. And so connecting with that energy grounds us to this earthly plane and grounds us to what we deeply desire in our lives. It moves us then to our energy to be mindful of. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. This is the Five of Swords. Okay, so we're going to find ourselves this week in a situation that we have been in before and that we would have usually cowered away from and said, oh no, you know, I can't do this. And we're going to have that, that sense. There's going to be a sense of like stepping back and then realizing, oh no, I have a lot more power here than I initially thought. So don't react instantaneously. Step back, look at things, question things, see things, and then move forward. So you are not the same person that you once were. And being able to see that for ourselves here, Sagittarius, that's going to be important. It's going to be invigorating and it's going to be empowering. But we're not going to see that instantaneously. And somebody's going to try and take advantage of us in a way that is very familiar. We're like, wow, I've been here before. Wow, I thought this like I've outgrown this or, you know, are you kidding me? Now it's happening here type of thing, but you are not a victim. Just know that you are so much stronger. You are so much more powerful and you're going to be taking back your power and taking back your authority of self. So that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Okay. So we are crowned here with the Knight of Cups. We're moving forward towards what we love, towards what we're passionate about, towards what's really important to us. And that is, that's a powerful thing. This is also, again, water sign energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. And there is a sense here of what do I love? And that's going to be a big part of this week. What do I love? What am I passionate about? Where do I need to give my time? Like, what do I want to build for my soul? And I don't know if I did this already, but I'm going to check that everything is in frame. Perfect. You know, how do I need to move forward in what I love for me? We're also going to be very drawn to people who are very expressive, who have a way of expressing their emotion in, it's almost like a poetry of being. So they're either going to have this way of words. They're not going to be so much of a wordsmith. Okay. Hmm, they could be actually. No. No. Is there sorts energy here? Yeah. Okay. This is, this is, I was like, no, there's swords energy. This person is going to be more blunt. Okay. With the page of, of swords, there's going to be a bluntness that that's going to come forward. And you're going to find this person to be actually a little bit affronting. You're going to be like, what the heck? But actually this person is going to speak. It's going get yeah, to speak to the younger you and it's going to connect you with an energy that, that you had been disconnected with when you were small for one reason or another, like you it's kind of like a, like they'll remind you of a person who passed away or, or excuse me, I'm going to cough <laughs> or a place that you used to visit when you were small and like people acted like them, but they're going to be a bit gruff and they're going to have this childishness to them, not childishness, but this, this youthfulness to them, this energy to them. I don't see it as being immature. I see it as like an energy, an energy, an energy. You're like, wow, if I had half the energy of you and they could be like, you know, double our age or three times our age or like you know a zillion times our age and there's just like a spark and a fire to them it's like whoa this is awesome with the knight of cups it's embracing what you love it's moving forward in your passion with the with the seven of cups 
it's seeing your dreams. And that's also what we're we're looking at here. This is going to be a time, Sagittarius, where we start to connect with what we've been dreaming of, where we start to listen to our dreams. Our dreams are going to be talking to us. Spirit's going to be talking to us in a very interesting way through our dreams. And that's going to be very powerful for us. With the seven of wands, there is a sense of like, I'm done with manipulation and fighting and and deceit and i'm seeing myself step more into the place that i need to be for me and what i have dreamt of and nobody else gets to have sovereignty over my dreams than me and that's going to be a really important thing because we're reclaiming our power and we're reclaiming what we want and we're also seeing that with the magician with the ten of cups this is saying embrace what you love embrace what you love it doesn't matter if people make fun of it it doesn't matter if people get it embrace what you love okay i I know a person who loves taxidermy, which I think is the like oddest, most random thing. And I, I thought it was kavats, right? I was like, oh, that's gross. I don't like this. And then when they explained to me the way they see it, I was like, oh, that really is beautiful. And it's not how I see it. <laughs> and I don't think you can convert me to loving taxidermy. But I totally respect you. Okay? And here, it's embracing what you love, even if people don't get it. Even if you know, you question it at times. It's like, no, but this is me. And this is what I love. And I don't need to be like everybody else. I need to be like me. And it brings us then to a very powerful place of the queen of wands, of embracing our magic and our fire and our tenacity and our beauty and our brilliance and seeing ourselves, knowing ourselves and saying, this is what I want. You know, I always look at the, the queen of wands as, as Hecate in, in Greek mythology and, and Hestia also. But Hecate is the goddess of magic, who like nothing is known about. And yet people study her, worship her. You know, there's, there's only like these, these vague knowing, knowings of her. And yet still she, she calls to so much imagination. She calls to so much self. And that's, that's the thing here also with the dreams. There's like, there's a vague knowing that inspires, that builds so much more, that leads, so, like, leads us so forward in a way that we're like, how, how is that even possible? So there's going to be something very small here that inspires us. And we're going to have to go our own way. Even if people think, well, that's kind of wackadoodle. I can't believe you're doing that. And it's like, no, but this is right for me. We are going to overthink. There is something we know that is coming. There's a blessing we know that's coming and we're getting frustrated. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, why isn't this working out? And we get really fixated too here, Sagittarius. We're like, why isn't this working out? You know, I know this dream is supposed to come true. I know things are supposed to be this way. I know it in the very marrow of my being. Why isn't this working out? It's on pause. You're almost being tested. Not almost. You're being tested here. And it's not in a way to like put yourself in a financial peril. It's not saying to do things dangerously. But it is saying, how much do you believe in you? And it's staying to your dreams. It's staying to what you deeply desire. Even if at the time, it's not going the way that we planned. So being aware of this. Again, we have to be fiscally responsible for ourselves. We have to be, you know, grounded and well-rounded and everything like that. But always keeping that dream and letting it propel us forward. That's going to be important because we're caught in our own head. We can overthink, we can overanalyze and then as above, so below. This is fear. This is fear that changes us, chains us and changes us. Okay. But with the magician as above, so below, as you believe it, so it becomes. And so if we're, we're sitting in fear, in a cage of fear, even if it's a beautiful cage, but it's like, no, you know, you can't move from this because you're not good enough. We're going to see that trickle down into everything. And yet here, it's believing we can. It's standing before the altar of our existence, embracing our magic, embracing our passion, embracing our fire and saying, yeah, I can. Why? Because nobody's better than me. I'm not better than anybody else, but nobody's better than me. And then that starts our fool's journey. Now we can be afraid of people thinking us as foolish and that's fine. And, you know, they'll think what they're going to think. But it's taking that leap of faith. It's going after what we're passionate about. It's saying, I believe in me. I, kn I, I know me. I know what I want is bigger than this. And I know where I'm going to be is bigger than this. And it's looking at ourselves in such a profound way. And it's saying, I was afraid to jump before. And I've beaded myself, beaded myself? That's not right. I beat myself up over it because I was afraid. But now, now I know more. Now I'm not the same person that I was. And that's going to be a huge thing during this time. Sagittarius, I'm not the same person that I was. And so I leap. And we have to be patient with the leaping. Because the only thing that is guaranteed when you jump is that you're going to fall. Okay, because gravity, man. So here, we take that leap of faith. We need to be patient with ourselves. But we become that student. We become that child that asks why. 
that discovers, that looks, that digs deeper. We, we start to embrace so much more of our life and, so, and of ourselves. We are embracing the Page of Swords energy. This is also air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. But we're questioning, we're seeking, we're going deeper into ourselves and what we want. We're letting our inner child come out and be like, okay, tell me the story. Because all we are is stories and perception. And embracing our passion and embracing our fire is going to be so important. But embracing the fact that we are forged and seeing that as a child, seeing that we are shaped by our experiences and seeing that with the innocence of a child of, oh, there's more here than I know. And I'm going to have to learn and I'm going to have to see and I'm going to ask a heck of a lot of questions along the way. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of embracing your voice, but don't be afraid of diving deeper, of not knowing, of learning, of of giving yourself permission to be a beginner. Because so often we think, well, I'm this old, I'm supposed to know everything. Why? How? <laughs> We're always learning, embracing learning and embracing our joy and our happiness, our magic and our power. That's important. And knowing that our mind, it matters. What we feed into our mind, it matters. Because whether we believe we can or whether we believe we can't, we're right. Our subconscious spirit message here is, <laughs> oh, you can't make this up, perception. Didn't spirit just say, we're just simply perception and stories. That's it. What is your perception? How are you perceiving your world? And can you change that perception to be a lot more positive for you? Because the sun is coming up. It is going to shine on you. But right now we feel caged and overwhelmed and trapped and like nothing I do is measuring up and good enough. Stop telling yourself that. Just say, you know what? I'm in a, I'm in a forging time. I am becoming such a powerful, I'm becoming such a powerful weapon of knowledge, of truth, of love, of compassion. I am fierceness and I am embracing my fierceness. But after every storm comes the sun. And it brings us then to our chakra energy of divine wisdom. And this is the soul star chakra located six inches below. Our, no, this is the soul star chakra located six inches above our crown. And here it is a blockage of connecting with that wisdom. There's almost a sense of like, I should know it myself. And it's like how we should seek, we should discover, and we should open ourselves up to the universe in a way that we're almost afraid to do. And it moves us. And I say almost because we're breaking this blockage and connecting with it. It moves us to our subconscious energy to be mindful of. This is Pisces energy. Time frame is February 19th to March 20th. And this is fear. We have a lot of fear coming forward. It's right over the sun, right? The happiest garden in the whole entire deck, which is reversed, which simply means it's on pause. But it's happiness, it's success, it's prosperity, it's abundance. But it's also over the eight of, of swords doubts and fears and negativity and i can't do this and that is fear so our sun is being blotted out by the moon and by the fear of what the darkness holds as you know a small child is afraid of the dark it moves us then to our subconscious tarot message which is the hangman reversed stop thinking you're the problem you're not the problem okay if there was something you needed to fix you'd fix it and if there's something you need to fix, you will fix it. The hangman is questioning you. I don't fit in. Well, if you've stumbled across this channel, if you're part of this family, you're not meant to fit in. You're meant to stand out. And it's time to connect with your love and your passion and yourself and to see you and to fall in love with you because you're pretty darn wonderful, Sagittarius. All right. All right, Sagittarius. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of a positive energy as we embrace the power, intensity, and beauty of this time and of ourselves. And please note that this meditation and healing will be accompanied by a loud sound. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you.
May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Sagittarius. May blessings and prosperity always be with you. I love you all. God bless. And have a blessed week. Bye.